Wow. Wow. Just take a look at this, folks. This is the inner sanctum of Chris Haskell's room. Chris Haskell, the sign of injury. Hi, this is Cheryl, Hope Specialist, and today I'm with a very special person to interview. You know we are all each other's hope. Today I'm with Chris Haskell, and I'm really happy to be with you. Chris Haskell is the sign of Enger. He's an activist, he's a filmmaker, and he is a humanitarian. Chris, what is this name, sign of Enger? What does that mean, and, and, and how did you get that name? Um, well, the, the sign of Enger name came when um, these uh, younger kids that uh, knew me quite well, they would, uh, they actually brought me a mask and, uh, and a cape, a black cape and a little mask, and they said, here, you need to start wearing this. You are now uh, uh, anointed as the sign of Enger. And I said, I laughed about it, but I actually put it on a couple times when I went out and put signs up. So why did they do this? What is this story about signs? What have you been doing? <laughs> well, I've been uh, getting the word out to a lot of people, and I utilized the ability of political signs. I said, you know, we can redo these political signs, paint them over and start start with fresh, fresh palettes and, and put your message on there. And it was a successful way, because as we all know, the media, there's things they don't talk about. And right. uh, the way, I, I was trying to find out a way that I can start my own media channel without being censored, and, and none of the above. And I figured that out all out with signs. And I started with a couple little ones, and uh, all in the Ron Paul election is when I started. I had no idea what I was doing, and I went from there to all kinds of medium size and large, and, and it just, I went eccentric at some point. <laughs> so what, what, uh, why were you doing signs, and what, what was the activist part of it? What, what was your subject? What was the thing that you were interested in telling people about? Um, well, a, a few things, but I'll tell you that what I started with was the chemtrails, the, the geoengineering program. And, you know, at, at first it, I didn't even believe it, let alone then once I realized not only is it real, this is, this is serious. And I, I needed to not just tell my friends and family, I wanted everyone to know. And I said, I'm going to start with my city, I don't know about anyone else, but I got a city of a million, and there was my first goal. When I get past the million, I'll let, other than that, I'm going to hit the million first. And I actually did get pretty close. <laughs> I, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, and why chemtrails? Well, um, actually what got me started with it, you know, first I thought it was kind of weird. I'd see things and I questioned it a little, but I didn't put much time into it. And someone, uh, I was talking about my mother and the way she had passed away. And, uh, and someone says to me, bro, those chemtrails killed your mother, okay? And I, and I went off on it, you know. And I, I, I don't want to hear your garbage, your conspiracy theory stuff, and just chewed in my new eyes. So I got important things to do. <laughs> and uh, then I started researching chemtrails, and I, wow, went off on a whole other tangent. Um, whether I even made all the signs, uh, for my mother, because that's what I claimed at the beginning was, but I tell you, it, it, after no time at all, it wasn't even important about what it was that killed my mother. What's important is what's going on. This is crazy. People don't seem to be aware of it. So how did the community uh, respond to all of this? What did people say in your neighborhood and out in the, out of the city? I'm, I'm hearing, I think, that you put these signs not around your neighborhood, but even out on the street. So how do people respond? Yeah, and, and I did clobber my neighborhood pretty good too. But <laughs> I, I, I made sure to, you know, I was thinking big. I wasn't just messing around. So I, I did neighborhoods all across Tucson and surrounding communities. But, uh, um, I, you know, the main thing I, I had as a goal was I, I'm getting this message out. I don't care. And, and I started with a couple neighborhoods and then I said, you know, forget this. I'm, I, I pick a neighborhood. I grabbed a map and started squaring it off and saying I'm doing all of it. How long did you do this for? Um, through where I got started was about 2007 because uh, that was 
you know, after I figured out what chemtrails are, I was already involved in the Ron Paul election for 2008. And, uh, boy, and I'll tell you something too, that when I was, I was putting up both signs. I had, I had Ron Paul signs and then I had chemtrail signs. And I even had to, I had to basically lie to my Ron Paul people because they're all, you're not, don't be putting up that, that darn chemtrails. That stuff isn't even real out there. So, yeah. But they're like, don't you get the two associated? So I had to lie to them too. I'd go, yeah, I just put up Ron Paul signs and I'd sneak over here and put one in. But it was kind of funny that I had to yeah. keep it away from the people from the Ron Paul campaign. Interesting. Yeah. So why are we meeting like this today? What what has recently happened in your life that brings us together? Uh, well, depending on how you want to term this, uh, they shut me down. They finally got to me. And, and I know that was the main point why I'm dealing with being jailed and why I'm dealing with uh, charges of criminal nature. Uh, it wasn't because I break the law. It was all because they wanted my signs down. And, and that's my belief 100% because I know I've affected some people. So what are those charges in case someone is listening does not know? What are the, what are the charges and what's actually happening right now? Well, they're, they're attempting to charge me with um, six terrorist charges and we're talking equal to manslaughter so 20 years to life is what i'm saying is a max that i could could do which is unbelievable to me because i mean i don't know how they're even trying to say that i did what they said because they they said they found three signs with a bag on the back that had powder let's just say it's flour and i know one thing they tested it it's it's not harmful Right. So it's not any kind of an agent that is a you know something yeah, some that will hurt people. Right. But I guess what they're thinking is that I put this on to scare people. Okay. I didn't. Put and why in the world would you want to scare people? I mean, you want to let people look up in the sky and and say, hey, maybe there's chemicals yeah. that are falling on us. But why would you want to scare people it, with a bag of flour? Exactly. No, exactly. I had I had no intentions. Of scaring people or freaking them out thinking that you know well then if you don't pay attention to this you know people are going to shoot you or something and then I, it was all about I love people I wanted the message out and I, I wasn't going to take your average and, and a standard way of doing it no I believe me I entertained a lot of people because I was you know lots of people saw my signs and in places where they didn't want even the people looking at it they didn't want that sign there you know right. themselves a lot of people would give me a hard time don't be putting your garbage out here. And it wasn't garbage they were worried about. They didn't seem to care one moment about the sign below mine or the sign next to me. Nope, they didn't care about that. A garbage on the ground as they stand and talking to me, they didn't reach down and pick up the garbage, no. Right. It was really, they didn't like my controversial message. Right. You know, um, they, they might have been a believer. They may have, Maybe they didn't believe in chemtrails. Maybe they, they, they just didn't want to, you know, we don't need any of that. Well, well talk. So they came and arrested you, I understand, and charged you with what? Uh, with six terrorist charges. I've got uh, three terrorist charges or class two felonies. Those would be equal to murder. Um, and then I have three class four felony charges. And, and what they actually say on them, um, the first three, the most, more serious ones, is that I um, did a simulated biological attack on the Pima on people living in Pima County with intent to terrorize intimidate uh, horrify or uh, harass so apparently if you were to do something that intimidates harassed or you know, potentially horrifies people uh, that is the law they're standing on that and that's all based on this powder that's non-toxic. Yes. yes, and that's no, why nothing else but powder that's non-toxic. Is correct. that right? Correct. And that's what they, that's why they use the word simulated. Right. So I put a fake. Like right. some people might think it's some toxic material that's got disease in it right. or whatever. You know? Right. So what are you what are you looking at right now? What are you facing now because of this charge? Um. You know, I'm thinking. In reality, I, they probably wouldn't give me no 20 years to life, but you know, it's it's very serious. 
I know that. But you have not gone to trial yet, is that correct? That's coming up? Correct. Is that and when, they, when that they happens? Postponed it a couple times. Now the trial is set for the 18th of September. And this has been going on a long time, you know. In my opinion on this whole thing is they made me sign us a, a thing to get out of jail saying that and they had all these areas I could have checked, you know, no checking for drugs and no guns and all that stuff. But what they did was they hand wrote that I cannot make, distribute, or post signs of any kind in the state of Arizona or anywhere. <laughs> so, and they and they had the same you, do moment. You, do you think this might infringe on First Amendment rights? Beyond, yeah, absolutely. 100% because what, they keep trying to state, oh, this has nothing to do with your signs. Well, how come you made me release and sign this thing on my release, you know? <laughs> you had me, truly. So what I'm thinking is this entire time that I have been prosecuted, and, and let's not forget about the seven weeks I spent in jail, but um, basically they've won. And, and the reason I say that is because I can't put up a sign. I got to sit down and shut up. Mm -hmm. And that's just been going on over a year now. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, they're, they're, they're winning. They're winning right now. And here, turns out, it's the same time, or well, maybe it's coincidence, but same time, right, I get put in jail. Within two weeks of me being in jail, they announce, David Keith, the geoengineering expert, <laughs> announces that Tucson is going to be the first test site, basically, of actual geoengineering. Oh, don't worry. They haven't been doing it up to now. Yeah. But they said, here's what it's going to look like and da da da. And we're going to go ahead and do it in the city of Tucson. Coming up. And at the time, I think they postponed that even a couple times. Mm -hmm. But it was coming mm -hmm. shortly after I got released. And he's a Harvard scientist, I believe, from I, the Harvard I, experiment. I believe so. And yeah. uh, this is about uh, that balloon to see yes. if we can block the sun. They were going to put a balloon on. Which are very toxic particulates yeah. that are going to be falling on the city of Tucson. Yeah, I don't believe they ever checked with the residents to ask them, did you want this? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Correct. Yes, exactly. So you have put a lot of effort, years and years of your, your own time, your own money, you never collected money, I understand, for the sign. Correct. Right? I think one, I, I could throw one classification that a gentleman that caught me and, and he says, are you really the guy? You're the guy? Oh my gosh. And, and it's funny because he made a business, it, not around what I'm doing, but he took, he adapted my idea, put them high on telephone poles. Because I, I all of a sudden started noticing this one sign, you know, everybody's seen the poles on uh, you know, the signs on poles and things, they sell sunglasses or they want you to whatever. Right. And they always have their phone number on them. So if that's illegal, first of all, you better contact there's a the guy's phone number. And I didn't put numbers on mine, but but when it came to that, uh, um, wow, I lost my train of thought. What point was I getting to? Which that point? maybe they used your strategy of putting oh, their, yeah, their yeah. signs up high. Yeah, the gentleman that I found, he, he goes, pole. are you really the guy? And he questioned me and he goes, hang on. Right there, what, my, my, wife, my wife needs to meet you. And, and, and he sent her over, he goes, don't go anywhere. And then he goes running off into the Circle K. And I found out later what, what he was doing. He was getting a $100 bill so he could hand it to me. And he says, no, you take, wow. I don't care, you're taking it. He says, sir, wow. I've learned so much of, of you and, and about the spraying, but, but if nothing else, I know where I can put my signs up where they're safe and they don't take them down so fast. Wow. So I, wow. I, I started seeing all of his signs. He, he wow. bought cars. He said, buy this junker car. But his were the only ones that were near. Because he goes, boy, it ain't easy putting them up that. You, got, you put them like 18 feet up. I go, you're darn right. Unless you don't care, you want them to take them right down. I put them where a six-foot guy can't even jump high and grab it. And if he does, he's going to hang on my sign because I put 16 nails in every sign. So is that but, where the powder was, way up there? No, no, as a matter of fact, that, that's another important factor. I had not put any signs on the ground for a long time. Why? Because they take them down. Mm -hmm. They pay a whole crew of people mm -hmm. to go out and look for my signs, and they pay them by, by signs, what I was told. 
and uh, they don't care about any other signs, just mine, just mine. So, so I wasn't going to put them on the ground because yeah. they're they're gone within. It's like they follow me on my right. phone. They're down the next day. Everyone else. Right. So I didn't even put. I didn't put those particular signs that they found the bags of powder on. All three of them, I know for a fact, I didn't put those signs on. They didn't just come to where I had already put them. They got the signs from me by requesting for them. I put them in my alley. They picked them up like they said they would. And then shortly after that, this whole thing comes down. Because you have done that for other groups in the past. You've, oh, yeah. you've just said, All you're time. having something going on, I'll give you some of my signs. I say, here's my address, but don't yeah. bother my dad. See, that was the whole point. If I, they don't have to catch me when I'm here. Right. I stick them in the alley. Right. And nobody touches right. them, you know, as far as they don't, you know, it's not right. trash. So I lean, I, I used to pack them up in wraps of five, and I'd take five signs together. Right. And then I'd stick a bag on the back of the one of the, of the five signs, and I'd stick a bunch of nails in there and tape it on the back. So, so they were all ready to go. They could yeah. put them up on poles. But right. guess what? That's whoever set me up. I think I think if those bags, they're probably the ones that I put on the back of the packs of signs. Mm -hmm. I, they asked for nails. So mm -hmm. I was standard issue, I'd stick, mm -hmm. stick a bag of nails on them. Wow. Yeah. So let me, let me just, I mean, because this is so, so important to the community of Tucson, how did other people respond? Did you ever hear from the average Joe on the street about your signs or, or what was happening as you, uh, I understand you, you delivered around town, so you were kind of accessible physically to people. So what, so what yeah. happened between you and some of the residents? Uh, well, and, and not very, not much in the negative aspect of it, but I, I, I'd occasionally get a guy, I see all your garbage you put everywhere, wasting your time. But very rarely did I even catch any of that. What I did get though was, and, and this is the reason why it's important too, and I think it's because people can't talk to pretty much anybody about chemtrails. Can you have conversations with your neighbor? Can you have conversations? As a matter of fact, it, it becomes negative in a lot of aspects. Family members shun other family members off. So I think what happened with me, I was getting the exact opposite. Well, who else drives around in the chemtrails van? So I've had things happen like uh, a lady was behind me at a light, and she's pull over, pull over, and I'm, my wallet. She just, you got to you got to see this. You got to see. And she pulls her phone. She shows me. She goes, I just get a text from somebody in Ohio that sends me a picture of your van, and she goes, wow. and I look up. I was just reading it, and the van's in front of me. Wow. So she crazily. Pull over, pull over. Uh, and that was, I mean, just one of, I'll, I'll tell you what, it was so common to take the guy in the chemtrail van and pull up, pull over, everything, not that's important, stop traffic, whatever, pull over, emergency. So, I mean, I've had times where one day, and I, I remember I had mentioned in that to you, up to 40 people had done this in one day. What I'm referring to as people, pull over like it's crazy you got babies hanging out of your car or something and they go pull over and they go this is happening isn't it they're killing all of us they're doing it i'm like oh yeah 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 they're, they are we we probably shouldn't block the road though <laughs> things like that you know? yeah so people look to you as an expert on kip trails if they wanted to talk about what that meant because i think so maybe their friends and family thought that they were loop-de-loop -loop even mentioning it. Absolutely. And they, they, so I gotta say, I see that as a service. I gotta say, yeah. I see it as a service. I don't see it as a terrorist, I see it as a service. <laughs> That's what I thought, but you know, hey, that way you get beat up and thrown in jail. You know, and, and then they wouldn't even tell me. I truly did not know why I was in jail. Now, trust me, wow. I knew in my heart, I said, this right. is all due to my science. I have pissed off some uppers, and, and they, then they check into it, they, we don't even have his name, because I, I didn't have any websites on my signs, and I have done, uh, I'm thinking in the neighborhood about 20 different series, in other words, 20 types of signs, uh -huh. just for the chemtrails alone, mm -hmm. and by the way, I never put cuss words on my signs. I know that everything that I do now, I show those immediately, because I was kind of proud of them, but sorry. But yeah, yeah, it was low taste. I understood that. But you know what? I had been putting up the signs for almost 10 years before I finally put a cuss word on it. Yeah. 
okay? And, and trust me, none of them had any cuss words on there. But now I had a few, and I did it all, because you know what, I'm tired of it. And nobody, do you see people standing up uh, on TV talking about, no, nothing. Right. You know, they were doing stuff in the background. They've informed people like myself that they were. I probably have in the neighborhood of 200 copied emails all coming from people who wanted to know what they sent to the news. And they also stated the news mentioned to them that, oh, nobody's ever called us about this. Yeah, I've got a hundred different people that right. sent you long text mails and they not only didn't respond to at it or responded in a, in a way that, oh, sir, they'd send them to some stupid website that says it's only contrails, it's not chemtrails, right. and or just totally ignore it. And then the news told me that themselves. They go, we've never heard of this. Nobody's ever tried to, oh, really? Yeah, right. right. They're lying. They're lying. So you've spent 10 years or more alerting people and making them aware that there are chemtrails. There is such a thing as geoengineering, and, yeah. that's, and that's a bigger field of chemtrails. But this is specifically look up in the sky and look at those crazy things that are yeah. that you see in the sky and that's not natural. Absolutely. Um, what do you get out of it, Chris? You did it free of charge. <laughs> that's funny. A lot of people actually say, they go, why are you doing this? And and they they in most cases had no idea how much time. Because I was literally clocking in approximately twenty hours a week. And, I mean, no question. I did that much for a long time. So people, even though they'd say, why are you doing all this? They probably truly even had no effort how much I really did because there was a lot more work to this and money. It was costing me money. I had to buy the paint. I had to buy the, uh, everything. So, I mean, it was, it was costing a bit, and I found ways to ease my pocket on that by, by using political signs and things like that nature. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I have to tell people, it's not for nothing. I get a free country out of this deal. That's what I get. It's not that I'm doing this for nothing, no. I get a free country out of it. Because, in my opinion, our com country is messed up right now. So are almost all countries. I mean, look at this. This project is, is so deep and so large. Thank it's you, Chris. Thank you so much. I'm Cheryl, Hope Specialist. I would ask you to open your eyes look up look around open your mind do some research and open your heart we're in a time that you need to send prayers of support support others we're all in this together it doesn't matter if you believe that there's geoengineering going on it really doesn't matter what matters is your right to tell someone about something when you think they're in danger it is your right in this country and not one of us should be charged for that. Not one of us should be prosecuted or persecuted for that. Please consider that. And I'm also going to ask you to look at the link below and contribute money. Chris, it's costing him a lot of money to defend himself in this behalf. He lost his job because his vehicle was taken and he no longer can do the delivery route that he that he had and because it takes a lot of time to, to uh, get yourself prepared to go to court. So I'm asking you also to open your wallets. Doesn't matter. No gift is too small and no gift is too large. Support another humanitarian. Chris Haskell, activist, filmmaker, and I would say humanitarian. Thank you for listening and listen to the other clips. We're going to be doing more.